Horrible Bosses comes out this week, and we got to see it early. And uh, it's one of those movies that makes you mad because, not because of how terrible it is, because you can't get mad at terrible movies. Terrible movies are just terrible movies. They could never be anything, a lot of them, than what they end up being. This, however, could have been a great movie. It stars really talented people. It's made by a director who knows what he's doing, but there's this huge, massive, empty hole in the middle of the film that is filled with kind of goofy slapstick jokes and this fake darkness and fake nastiness, but ultimately it's a failure of a film and you should watch something else instead. These guys have horrible bosses. You know they have horrible bosses because the movie's called Horrible Bosses and it continues the trend of making the movie going experience even dumber than it has been in years past. Cars 2, Bad Teacher, Horrible Bosses, The Hangover, The Hangover 2. This movie, unsurprisingly, is about some people that have horrible bosses. It's about three guys that have horrible bosses. Charlie Day, Jason Sudeikis, and Jason Bateman. They're all three white, privileged, middle class, no family having, no friend having Los Angelinos that decide to, a la Strangers on the Train, the, the classic Hitchcock thriller, decide to crisscross and kill each other's bosses. And it's kind of funny. There are funny parts. Jamie Foxx is really funny in it. Kevin Spacey is really funny in it. Jennifer Aniston is really funny in it. As an ensemble thing, everyone gets a few funny jokes in it. But there's a great big sucking void, hole at the center of the film where you can see that through the crack that they open into something much more interesting, much darker than the fake darkness, the cloak of darkness that they basically invent by swearing a lot that actually lives at the center of the film. Normally you can't criticize somebody for not making the movie that you think that they should have made. Except in this case, you kind of actually can do that because they open that door a crack. They open the interesting kind of messed up characters doing interesting kind of messed up stuff in a funny way that also says things about personality and ambition and how you think you should be treated in life. But it's that door, that crack through which you can see an interesting movie, in which interesting people do interesting things, in which these three guys who are sitting, and they're not just three guys, they're three white guys who are actually kind of racist. And they're three white guys who don't really need to be killing their boss, but do so because they're weak and they can't solve their own problems. That crack, where an interesting film is on the other side that's actually dark, where they actually do kind of say nasty stuff about what it means to be somebody that's white and in your 30s and privileged and have the world under your thumb, but instead feel like there's just this one guy who's bothering you and you decide to go and kill him, that's slammed shut really quickly by goofy slapstick jokes which are funny, but at the same time, I've heard them all before, and you have too. So what should you watch instead? The guy that directed this movie directed one of the best documentaries, one of the best films of all time. It's in my personal top 100, called The King of Kong, which later got retitled or subtitled The King of Kong, uh, Fistful of Quarters, which is a little bit weird. But it's a documentary about a guy uh, who's battling, it's a true story, about a guy that's fighting to wrest the title of top score champion on the Donkey Kong arcade machine from the guy that's had it for a really long time. And it's this incredibly slight premise that gets turned into a completely fascinating movie that's fascinating because it's about seemingly normal, nerdy, white men who have these weird obsessions, who have this kind of depth of character and do kind of messed up stuff to defend their little patch of turf. It's really fascinating. If it was fiction, you would never believe it because it would seem too crazy. But it's all there on camera. It's a really, really good movie. It's completely fascinating, and it's made by a director who was willing to tell a story that was relatively complex about what nerdy, privileged, white 30-year-old males can do when they think that they have to defend themselves from somebody. Unfortunately, Horrible Bosses, the next iteration of that film, didn't end up so well.